When I first heard about the ZIG programming language, I was skeptical. Why do we need another language in the systems programming space? We already have C, C++, Rust, and Carbon in theory. But I gave it some thought, and there actually is a place for this language in the systems programming ecosystem, and I think you should love it too. In this video, we're going to talk about what ZIG is, where it fits in the systems programming architecture, and my thoughts on the language. Let's get into it. So here we're on the website for the ZIG language, we're at ziglang.org, and ZIG is kind of a cool language because it's built around three simple principles to keep it as simple as possible. First, the language is meant to have no hidden control flow, meaning the code only does what you say it does, there are no secret features. Two, there are no hidden memory allocations, meaning that the code only allocates the memory that you ask it to, nothing happens in the background. And three, there's no preprocessor and no macros, meaning the code that you write is the only code that gets put into your program, no more and no less. This comes at a time where I think a lot of languages that are meant to be low level, like C, for example, are kind of bloated with their runtimes, like libc, you know, the program does a lot of stuff before it actually gets to the code that you write, which could force you to spend your time debugging the language and not your code itself, which is kind of the whole mantra of of the language, right? Keep in mind that everything I say in this video is at the time that Zig is in 0100, so it's not even at a 1.0 yet, so everything in this video is subject to change. So what are the principles surrounding Zig and where does it fit in all the other languages? I would say that Zig is one level above assembly and one level below C. One level above assembly, obviously, because the program has human readable syntax that is not just you transposing memory in and out of registers. But it's one level below C because you are actually given finer control of your code than C, but without all the bloat. When you make a program in C, it by default links in the C standard library. Uh, it does a lot of stuff under the hood that you're not necessarily aware of. Here in Zig, the program is a little simpler. Granted, there is an imported standard library, but it's just not as bulky as C. So again, a level above assembly, one level below C. Let's go into the developer ecosystem, which is one of the things that I'm happiest with with, with Zig that makes it kind of fun uh, for a new programmer. If you install the Zig compiler, which I've already done, we'll make a, a, like a folder called Zig video. When you run the Zig compiler, you're given this really nice menu that kind of reads like the cargo program in Rust. You're able to do things like initialize a library, initialize a folder for an exe, initialize a folder for a library, and do a bunch of things like AST checking, running an entire integrated test suite that runs inside the program as well, which is a whole other video that I'll make later on this. Also, the Zig compiler can translate C code into Zig code and also act in as a drop-in archiver C uh, compiler and C++ compiler, a bunch of cool stuff for Zig. So let's go ahead and make a project real quick and we'll do uh, Zig init exe. So here it's created the repo for us, just like cargo would, and we have our code here, main.zig. A lot of comments here, but basically all this does is it prints out some code and the code says all your code base are belong to us. So to build that, pretty simple, nothing crazy going on here. We'll do zig uh, build and then run. So that'll run the compiler. It'll invoke the LLVM backend to output the object, and then we get our executable, which gets ran, all your code base are belong to us. Another really, really cool feature that I like about Zig is that if you saw here at the bottom of our, uh, our source code, you can actually write in tests directly into your code so that instead of Zig build run, we can do Zig build test, and that actually invokes every test that we write into our code. So we can do zig build test, it'll do the same thing, it'll compile all of our tests, and it'll say, yep, we ran all these functions and none of them failed, so all of your, t your tests passed, which is pretty cool. Another really important part of zig that I like is, again, it's meant to be a systems programming language. If you've ever coded in a language like C or assembly, one of the big problems is transposing your code from you know x86-64 on Linux, and maybe you wanna move that code to a you know, MIPS processor running Windows. I know it doesn't exist, but you see my point. What you can do here is you can do zig build tac d target, and I can say equals x86-64 Windows. And this will actually produce a Windows executable. I can't run it because I'm not on Windows, but I think that's a really, really important feature. Here we have zig video.exe, which will do the exact same thing on the Windows ABI. So really, really interesting. Another big piece that I really, really enjoyed from using this language is the security baseline of a language. So if you are learning to code, but you are writing a project in C, you should not be doing that because C is known to be a very dangerous language. It's very easy for a new programmer to make errors when you're writing C that leave your code vulnerable to attack. I tried to do this on stream. I tried to use zig to make a program 
that was able to be hacked. So th what this piece of zig code does is it creates a TCP server, it binds on a port, and then it listens for a message from the user. What I really, really like about zig is that it does have security in mind from the go. All the functions are being used like uh, Rust splices, where the types have associated length values to them, meaning it's really, really, really hard to allow the programmer to make a vulnerable condition in this language. Everything lengthwise and memory management wise is done under the hood for you without having to explicitly control the languages. So I spent literally two hours trying to make this language break and I, and I couldn't do it. So I really, really like that. Another important piece of this language is the documentation. So any new language, you're gonna to have to learn how to code it. And the ziglang.org does a really good job of documenting the language, everything from the standard library down to the types, and basically every feature that the language has. So you have like your vectors, you have your pointer concepts here, you have your volatiles, your non-volatiles, uh, everything that the test suite allows you to do is documented here in the documentation. So I found that very, very enjoyable. Also, they have the entire standard library mapped out into documentation where it shows you the types that it has and also if those types are able to throw errors that you have to handle in the specific Rust uh, error handling scheme. So that's pretty cool too. I think there is a fundamental question though that is still unanswered in this language. And the question is, why Zig? Why would you have a new language like this if things like Rust already exist? I think we are moving into a world where if you're learning a new language, you should be learning type safe languages that are not breakable, you know, to a certain extent like Rust. The problem is it is very hard to justify teaching Rust to a new programmer because Rust in itself is already a very difficult language. I highly suggest that if you're learning to program, you don't learn Rust as your first language for that reason. It's a very complicated language that makes things safer, but you have to know what things are unsafe before you can make things safer. Zig, on the other hand, is much easier for the user to learn. This code reads a lot more like Python or C than it does like Rust and makes the syntax a lot easier to hold on to. So where does Zig fit in in the systems programming namespace? I think where it fits is if you already know the basics of programming, but want to learn a type safe language that isn't as complicated as Rust and get your hands dirty with doing some embedded systems projects that don't have to take the Rust language into account, Zig is the language for you. Also, subscribe.